Right, welcome on board. I hope all of you have washed your hands before you joined this call. Uh, so how are you feeling today? So I'd like to know which department you are from. So in this session, uh, I will be interactive as much as I can. So let me know in the chat box, which department are you from? Can you just type it in the chat box? Which department are you from? Okay, guys, see mechanical, civil, electrical, ECE, civil. All right. So there is a, all the departments are represented. So, so if you're a faculty member, or I see a lot of alumni, a lot of volunteers who made this happen. So let me know which year did you graduate? So please let me know in the chat box, which year did you graduate? By the way, do you still remember which year you graduated? And perhaps you will find your batchmates in this call. Let's see. So we have a wide range of years coming up. So I hope you recognize some of your batchmates in, are in this call. Um, a lot of people are in this call. That's great. Okay, you've got a wide variety of people from uh, different locations, different branches, different years. Uh, but by the way, that by the way, with that exercise, you also know how old each each one of you are. So, when Dr. Jayasri invited me to speak at BBC, you know, it sounded like I'm speaking at uh, the BBC News Channel, and I told her, you know, I am the most unlikely person to be invited to an event called "Be Bold and Confident" because when I was in CET. I was not even visible. Nobody remembers seeing me in CET, but I truly appreciate this initiative that all of you have come together to um, uh, build. Like uh, our principal, Dr. Gigi Sar said, you know, the initiative when everybody comes together, magic happens. And that's a great initiative. I congratulate you for the, this venture. But today, as you embark on a new journey, uh, I would like to share with you three things you need to focus on as students. Uh, these three things are going to be even more important than your marks and grades. And I'll tell you why. Because listen, these three things could mean the difference between whether your career will be easy or whether your career will be frustrating. So before I share with you those three things, let me tell you how I realized it. You see, I studied in Trivandrum. I still remember my first day of my pre-degree years. I studied in Government Arts College Trivandrum. If anybody knows anybody from Arts College, you can feel free to type in the chat box. I know you are from there. So my on the first day of my pre-degree, my father took me to Government Arts College Trivandrum for pre-degree registration. If you remember, I still remember the walking up those that majestic red colonial building, and I walked up. We walked up to this uh, second floor, where we are ushered into a big uh, hall filled with parents and new students. So some people are saying they are from arts college. Yeah. Uh, so we should, and we were standing there, we were waiting for our, so my father and I waiting for our chance to register. Uh, so this is before the classes start, right? This is the real first day in the college. I remember as we were waiting, a group of senior students approached us and said, we are from ACES, Arts College English Rhetorical Society. And my father was so delighted and he was convinced that I should sign up for that club right away. And he started the conversation with them. I immediately slipped away. I just went away. I knew what was coming because I was smart enough to sense that um, he was going to force me to do something that I didn't like or I didn't want. So my father called me back and said, come, I'll talk to these guys. So when I, when I started to talk to these seniors, I took my father's hand and said, you know, our, our turn has come. Let's go. So I walked away from a golden opportunity. Looking back, I walked away from a golden opportunity. But on the way, my father kept telling, you should join the club. You know, I, and I said, oh, I will do that later. Few months later, he asked me, did you join the club? And I said, you don't understand. That's not important. What's important is scoring high marks and doing a great job and getting a job. And the truth was this. Actually, I had visited the club once when I was in arts college. I visited there, I saw the other people in the club and I felt that others were so much more confident, fluent and eloquent. So therefore I never went back. I didn't tell my father, but I never went back. Uh, so that was in pre-degree. So two years later, I got admission in CET for in electronics and communication engineering. Anyone in electronics and communication, please do type in the chat box. So if I recognize you or you recognize me, most probably you may not recognize me. So back then get, getting into CET, and being in electronics and engineering, 
was like getting a life's golden ticket. So you you get you you're more assured to get a job, right? So that was a so this was in demand. So those days, my sister was studying in REC Calicut, uh, which is now known as NIT Calicut. By the way, most of you know that my sister actually uh, is a faculty at CET. Her name is Manchu. Um, so when my sister was studying those days in REC, um, the principal of REC was a highly respected and competent administrator known as um, Dr. Unnikrishnapalle. So one day during a train journey, my father bumped it with this uh, principal of REC, Dr. Unnikrishnapalle, and they chatted. And my father asked him, do, do you have any advice for my son? Because he studies electronics and communication. So apparently Dr. Unnikrishnapalle looked at my father and said, electronics is fine, but communication is everything. And he said, if, you want, if he wants to be successful, he will have to communicate better. So my father, I remember my, fa my father came back home and was so eager to tell me what happened. But as you can see, it's not that no one told me about the importance of being bold, brave and confident and eloquent and influential. I knew it like most of you know it, right? So why don't we do it then? If you have heard this for years, why, didn't, why don't we do this? At least I know my case because I just didn't believe it was possible for me. Have you ever felt that way? certain things are only possible for somebody else and not for you. So I was, I didn't have the, the I didn't have the belief. And since, since I didn't have the belief, I didn't do anything related to that. And I just didn't pay enough attention to it. And I felt, I also felt that I can get away without learning it. Right? I didn't, first thing, I didn't believe it. And second thing, I said it was not necessary. So for the next 10 years, I didn't do much to pick up that skill. Um, and in fact, for the further about 10 to 15 years, I didn't do, even when I was aware of it, I didn't do much till at least 15 years after leaving the college. Then suddenly I realized the need to do it and the need to change and need to change was now. So now if you fast forward to now, these days, last week, my team, uh, I, by the way, I live in Singapore. Uh, my team in Singapore informed me that uh, people from more than 100 countries has benefited from our coaching programs, books and online courses. So that's 100 plus countries. Uh, and I was like, wow, my God. All right, that's huge. And um, so some of my students include uh, quite um, prominent um, entrepreneurs, CEOs, UN diplomats, uh, bureaucrats, academics, faculty members. And some of them even hold degrees from Harvard, Cambridge, and more. So basically people from all walks of life from many, many corners of the world. So I keep asking, people ask me, what changed? People also ask me, what changed, right? A lot of my friends ask me, why would these folks who are apparently successful and doing really well, listen to someone who has born, up, born and brought up in Kerala, right? Or in Trivandrum. And uh, during an interview on BBC World News, I was also asked this question. That's why I brought up this point. I was asked this question, Manoj, you are an engineer. How come you got interested in speaking? And I was intrigued, but I was not surprised because you see, there's a general perception around the globe that engineers do not speak. That's a general perception. So now imagine this in your context and the people you know, and this includes alumni and um, um, faculty and all the volunteers who are here today. Imagine this, what if engineers spoke? And what I have seen in my experience is that when engineers start to speak, they can speak better than anybody else because you have an analytical mind, you can think, you can structure your thoughts, you can present. But it might be hard to, for you to believe what I just said because there's no evidence set. So here are three things I would suggest and recommend for your consideration that you need to get started now to stand out and stay ahead of everybody else. So the number one is to focus on boosting your belief that it is possible for you. So your communication is your key. It is your life's golden ticket. So believe that it's possible for you to master it, even if you do not see any evidence. Right now, you don't see your circumstances. You can give 100 reasons why it's not possible for you. So I always tell my students, no belief, no relief. You need to believe that you can be, you can get there. Like when principal Dr. Jijisar said, uh, we need to be ensure hundred percent placement or be in the top one or top 20. Why not top one, right? So 
But even to achieve that, we have to have the belief that is possible. So no belief, no relief. And I can tell you with certainty after coaching people from more than 100 countries, I can tell you with certainty that you can become a fabulous speaker and a fabulous leader no matter where you start. I said, no matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you start, but it does matter whether you start. So start with the belief that you can become competent, become relentless, become unstoppable. So that starts the belief. And when you start off, uh, some of you are in uh, semester one, some of you are in uh, final year, you have different experience, different backgrounds, you studied in different schools. Uh, my point here is you do not need to see the whole path now. You don't need to see the entire path from where you are now to where you want to be, but you need to be clear where you want to reach. Let me illustrate that with an example. So imagine uh, in the middle of the dark night, it's a dark night, in the middle of the night, you take your car and drive or bike, you um, drive from Trivandrum to Trishur in the middle of the night. And when you start, you can't see the whole way. You don't, don't see the whole, whole way. Your headlights of your vehicle will show you only the next 50 meters. But you know for sure that if you, eventually you will reach your destination covering just 50 meters at a time. And have the belief that you will reach your destination no matter how dark it appears. So that's number one. Have focus on the, have building that belief. So number two will be to focus on mastering the five core skills. You might have heard me saying this again and again in different sessions, if you attend any of my sessions. So I keep saying it's not often the best or the smartest or the brightest who will rise higher. If you want to bulletproof your career, to recession-proof your career, on top of building your competencies, your graduation, collecting your degrees and certificates, you also need to master five core skills. And if you do not master these five core skills, it doesn't matter what you master, you will always be performing under your true potential. So by the way, here are the five core skills and I will also type it in the chat. Uh, let me start, somebody is messaging me. So let me just switch off that messaging. Um, so here are the five core skills, right? The ability to connect. When you see someone for the first time, how do you connect with them? An ability to communicate, ability to network, ability to lead and ability to influence. Let me see if I can type that into the chat box. Uh, if uh, you want to take notes, I will just, and there is also YouTube videos on this. If you want to learn more, I'll invite you to save the YouTube link or subscribe to the channel because there are more um, educational videos coming up on that topic. So five core skills, and this, this is what you really need eventually on top of what, so competence is important, but confidence is paramount. Uh, because problem in the world, there are a lot of people with, who are competent, but they do not have the confidence. And that's why they struggle in their career and they don't reach the potential they could actually be. And I always say there's a problem in the world. There are a lot of competent people who do not have the confidence and a lot of confident people who do not have the competence. So you need to build up that, uh, you need to build up both competence and confidence. And the good news is you can master these skills. As I said before, you can master the skill. Even if you are introverted or shy, you can fly. I always say I was born shy, but I learned to fly. So I, and I've seen that happening in my clients um, that people with in various background, various situations worse than most of people in this session are doing extremely well before because they build up, showed up their confidence, build up their confidence and the belief system and also learning these five core skills. So that, this also means some of you might be struggling with your academics, may not be performing well in academics. You still have hope if you catch up on your academics, but also learn these skills. It also means for those of you who are really the best in academics, you are not safe. You, unless you master the five core skills. You remember, the world is changing drastically and irreversibly. It is getting flatter than ever before. So if you are smart enough, I would strongly recommend you on top of your competence, also focus on building those five core skills and you will be glad that you did it. So that is number two, focus on the five core skills. Number three is to focus on uh, progression, not perfection. You see, when you are starting to learn something new, like being brave to communicate, to attend interviews, you're learning something for the very first time and you don't have much experience, it can be intimidating. But here is what I like to 
say because when you are starting to learn something new you are bound to make mistakes right uh, for example when you first started to learn a b c d you probably made mistake but you went on doing it you got got better so here is the thing don't expect to be perfect and world class on day 1 even the cet we just said cet was not built in a day it was built with our faculty and alumni and into government intervention and to build into a brand so it takes effort and um, we make mistake we also learn from a mistake then i also say that our biggest mistake is to be afraid to make more mistakes so don't focus on perfection so i say focus on progression not perfection and also this is very important yeah, when you join clubs like this be bold and confident you will see some people are real already bold and confident you also meet people who are better than you so my advice for you is don't feel scared don't feel jealous don't feel envious honor them respect them and learn from them and uh, that that is something that will help you really well for instance i'll tell you this one of my classmates in cet messaged me recently and remember this we have not met or spoken in 25 years okay so he sent me a message and i'll share with you my message uh, he sent me uh so remember this is the first message i'm receiving from him in 25 years uh, so i asked dr jessica can i share and she said okay you can share so this is what she said i got he sent can you see my screen somebody can confirm sir, yes, yes sir yes yes so he said yes, uh, you never used to speak much and now oh my god so this just proof that it is something new uh it's not that i was born with any special skills so anything of that sort so my point of showing that is to show you proof for my past where i was operating under the radar and i was not doing doing a good service for me by staying under the radar so as you embark on a new journey today remember one day your classmates will be proud of you they will admire you so if you dedicate yourself to lifelong learning by the way if you want to adapt to this new world you need to embrace lifelong learning i have students who are much older than me some of them are 65 years old one guy is 77 years old they still come to learn because they have embraced lifelong learning they have technically they are retired but they want to learn because that's what keep them young and alert so you are too young to give up on learning one of the mistakes most graduates do is they stop learning you see your university your uh, uh, college has helped you to learn something but that's not enough you need to catch up there will be a gap that, as i said in one of the other sessions uh, which is on youtube where i spoke at the professional speaker summit in kerala um organized by the government i was saying you see that there will be time for the curriculum to catch up with the industry so that's not an excuse for you to give up or not put extra effort you need to be willing to put an extra effort required to bridge the gap and part of that is to embrace lifelong learning so one of the things i said in that talk is you know if if imagine there was a brain surgeon who graduated in uh, let's say 1960s he can't do brain surgery today referring to the uh the lesson he learned in 1960 the patient will die so when i said this those actually there was a brain surgeon in the audience uh, in that professional speaker summit uh, dr iqbal he was a previous vice chancellor of kerala you know he came to me and said oh, i really ad admire your point because you know i am a brain surgeon oh, we need to keep learning so the point is you need to, if i i say if you dedicate yourself to lifelong learning if you commit your time to transform yourself you will reach the heights you never imagined before and people who once knew you will not be able to recognize you uh, to if you want to give me to give me an example imagine this um, have you ever seen a beautiful butterfly flying happy and high when you look at it you can't believe it once used to be an ordinary caterpillar so just like that when you are determined to stretch yourself and challenge yourself you will make your family proud you will make your bbc club members proud you will make your friends proud so once again here are the three areas i suggest that you focus on focus on boosting your belief that's possible for you focus on mastering the five core skills focus on progression not perfection so today as you launch as we launch so the bbc club let me also warn you about something and you i just want to warn you about something because you join with a lot of enthusiasm but you are going to face some challenges and let me tell you that because if you try to invite your friends to join this club 
many of them won't join you because they may not have the same vision that as you do. So you try to convince people they may not join because their belief system is not there yet. But don't feel discouraged. There's some background noise. So don't feel discouraged and don't lose your focus. Because when you know you are on the right path and your friends don't join you, guess what? Walk alone. Like Rabindra Nath Tagore said, right? Ekla chalo re. Just walk alone. Not everyone might join you because they don't have the same vision as you do. So as Einstein said, and as your uh, BBC Club tagline says, be a voice, not an echo. So you may sometimes you may have to stand out and find your voice and speak up. So my friends, if you are feeling um, you are feeling you're not ready, I encourage you to take the courage and join this uh, take out take on these opportunities uh, with the generous help from volunteers and alumni. And I truly believe if you're willing to make a focus, deliberate and determined effort to improve your skills. I have no doubt that one day in perhaps in two years time or five years time or 10 years time when the CET BBC club celebrates anniversary, guess what? They will invite you to become the guest of honor. And I look forward to that day. So with that, I would like 